was a lot harder than you were expecting. Wasn't it? <laughs> it, it, uh, my my arm slipped, and it flung the bat. <laughs> I wonder if Joel's still I recording. Dad's yeah, still recording. It says, I'm, I'm just going to put that away. <laughs> that better be in the intro. That better be in the intro. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Curling Nation, episode four. Curling Nation sells out. Uh, we've got a sponsor. Uh, Reese at uh, Great Dane downtown was kind enough, kind, kind enough to get us some beers. Uh, I've got the... Pax Pilsner, Garrett uh, has got the Kitchen Sink IPA. Um, Ty, you've got the Scotch Ale. The beautiful Scotch Ale. The beautiful Scotch Ale. Craig also has a Scotch Ale, I believe, as well. Scotch Ale. Um, it's a big can of beer. It's a big can, a big of, beer. can of beer. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're excited <laughs> to drink it. Um, and uh, thanks, th thanks to great, great Dane. For uh, getting us some drinks, um, uh, Great Dane downtown Madison, East Side, uh, Middleton, Fitchburg, Hilldale, Fitchburg and Hilldale, Hildale. yeah, and Wausau, and yeah. Wausau, and Wausau. Uh, coming up on on the show, Jenna Martin from the USCA uh, talked about her role in social me media. Uh, We've got some event updates. Uh, we talk about some uh, championships that are happening. Uh, we talked about some good po poutine from the Great Dane. Um, <laughs> but first up, we got Jenna. All right, joining us on the show is Jenna Martin, uh, formerly Jenna Haig, as uh, us older cur curlers know her by. Um, Jenna, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on. Thanks for being here. What is your role at the USCA? Why don't we just start there? I guess my technical title is the manager of social and digital media. So kind of all things social media. If you ask my mom, she thinks I just tweet all day, which is <laughs> half true, I guess, but um, a lot more than that. So a lot of behind the scenes stuff with uh, content calendar planning and everything going into our new website and our logo launch and everything like that. So um, a lot of exciting stuff happening, yeah. but um, that's kind of just a high level view of what I do. So you're going to manage. What's your, what's your background? What do you, where, where, how did you get into this? Where, where did you come from? Oh, well, <laughs> I used to curl, um, which is kind of the start of all this. And as curlers do, we can't really escape the sport. Um, you know, it's the people, it's the community. We just kind of keep coming back to it for one reason or another. So I, um, after the 2017 trials, I realized pretty quickly that real life was approaching. And so I went into corporate America in Milwaukee at a company called Direct Supply. Um, but in the background I was doing like some freelance writing, blogging, social media stuff. I worked with Jerry, Guy Jerry Gertz and Price Atkinson a couple of times and that kind of led me to getting introduced to Jeff Plush, USA Curling's current CEO and um, just kind of took it from there. So your background is in marketing and? Yeah, communications as well. Good. Well, that yeah. seems helpful. Comes in handy sometimes. Uh, well, that's so like our community, community, our curlers all, there's a diversity of curlers, you, you, you know, anybody that's on the ice has some kind of different thing going on, so. Mm -hmm. So you're going to post on uh, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram? Instagram. Um, trying to get the YouTube going. Yeah. You've Tick been part of that a little bit, Joel. TikTok or no? No TikTok. I mean, if you <laughs> want to be the first. Uh, uh, no, thanks. By all means. Yeah, it's uh, you want TikTok? Yeah, it's just going to be me and Craig twerk curling. <laughs> I support that. Maybe yeah. that's what the people want. Yeah, because it's brownie with the wagon. <laughs> so, Ty, you know, uh, we know. People want. Yeah, uh, we, we know you can party in jorts. Can you uh, curl in jorts too or no? Yeah, it just uh, it hurts. <laughs> hurts the boys. But it's possible. It's a thing that can happen. <laughs> Perfect. 
So, Jenna, uh, can you tell us about, like, what, what change is, are making, are happening with the website? Because it's, I mean, I'm hearing some good things and I, you know, I, but I don't know exactly how in depth it's all going. Yep. So we're working on actually building a new website. I'm not sure the specific launch date. We're still working on that, but um, it'll give us the opportunity to kind of make it more intuitive, which is huge because if you go on our current website, it's kind of a wild goose chase and a very frustrating experience to find whatever the heck you're looking for, if you can even get to that point. Yep. Um, yeah. And then it'll also give us some control with um, sponsorships and streaming and everything like that. So how long until like it's rolled out like you want it or like you're working on In 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's job long security. That's <laughs> job security right there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't know. There's a there's a lot of stuff. So I actually went to the USA curling national office in Stevens Point for the very first time back in May, probably. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but there's so much stuff and it's really cool and exciting. Um, but at the same time, it's also super overwhelming because there's no organization or a lot of the stuff you look at it and you're like, what the heck is this? Like I found a picture of a little kid holding an American flag and I'm like, is this Craig Brown? And so I sent it to Craig on Facebook and confirmed it was him. Like how many years ago, Craig? I don't know. but. There's was, so much stuff that we have to get in order. So um, our plates are full, but we're excited for the opportunity to provide like some archive content and stuff like that as well. That picture was when I was 10 at the uh, watching my dad at the World Championships in 1986. Cool. Um, <laughs> she's like, was this you? I re looks like your mom <laughs> in the background, but... Oh, in the background, like okay, I thought. Yeah, I thought you you looked like your mom, but <laughs> what no, the no. sick flow you got going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is it is sick. Um, all right, so did you get a, did you give me a timeline like when you think it's gonna be something you're happy enough to put out there? No, I didn't give you a timeline. I'm trying to dodge that question if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Legal. Artfully, I might add too. So yeah. what, what's your what's your low hanging fruit, Jenna? What what what's the, the biggest thing you want to tackle first? Um, in my current role is just so, yeah. just that part as of the website. Sorry. Ooh, I guess just making it more user friendly. I mean, overall, the low hanging fruit in my current role is telling the stories of the people in our community. I think there's always been such a divide between. Um, the NGB itself and the actual curlers at the club level. And I would love to try to continue to bridge that gap. And I think that gets accomplished through storytelling. So, um, I mean, ultimately we're all on the same page. We all love curling and we want to see it go and do well. And um, it, sounds, it sounds so cliche that I'm saying this out loud, but um, that's kind of how we get that accomplished and doing it daily through social media, digital media, the curling news, stuff like that. I love it. I yeah. love it. Storytelling is the way because that's how we've always done it um, from history on. So, yeah, and especially like I know there's a lot of concern, and I don't know. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel it too. But like the more curling grows, so many of us. I just realized my name on here. Sorry about that. Um, the more curling grows, <laughs> some of us are so tied to like the niche and tight knit community of the curling world, and it's finding a way to keep that uniqueness of our culture, but still promoting it to the masses and um, getting into younger demographics and stuff like that. Yeah, there definitely over the last 10 years or so, there's been a huge reduction in junior curling. Mm -hmm. And I think that is mildly attributed to, if you're not the top, you're not gonna get picked and you're not gonna go anywhere. And it needs to be, you can be a lifelong, lifelong player of the game. You just have to start when you're young you have these opportunities mm -hmm. but it doesn't always have to be the main end goal and i think that's getting lost in the current phase that usa curling's in mm -hmm. yeah i know uh when i started curling uh we went to nationals our first year because we were the only team out of Mi michigan so 
we got to sign, sign up and go and we got killed uh <laughs> but uh i had a lot of fun uh at jun juniors uh and playing and I think that's what get getting to do that your first year is uh for me it was huge i mean i had a great time and that's probably what uh got me hooked on curling right away yeah I agree. I mean, some of the, like, the very first teammates that I ever had are, like, some of the best lifelong friends that I have to this day. And I know Joel, Craig, Ty, you probably all have the same experiences with your junior teams, Garrett. Mm -hmm. I don't know your curling history, so I apologize. But... <laughs> Not a junior, never was. I came in old, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My first gift was Joy Bon Bonfoy, and we're, we're still good friends. Yeah, it's like the first people who you kind of make the dive into this weird, weird world with is like who you kind of stick with outside of curling. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad to hear that you are you're talking about culture and uh, longevity and, and the history of the sport, because my opinion, um, newer curlers coming into into a club or into an arena or into like um, you know just they, they're a paper club. Um, really being able to expose the history of curling, I think is huge. I think that's that's part of like the culture. That's why we sit at the table at the end of, the, at, at the end of an event, at the end of a, a, a draw. Um, so telling those stories and saying that's that's our culture and y'all need to do that. I think that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another piece of that too, um, especially in this current social climate that we're kind of living in is expanding upon that culture and not getting comfortable with the way that things are but bringing that like welcoming spirit of curling mentality and fundamental and um welcoming like legitimately welcoming everybody of all demographics races ages um, sexual orientation whatever and continuing to just have our curling community be reflective of the community that we're in i think is a big push that we're making as an NGB as well. Well, and it kind of separates our sport from everything different. I mean, I played softball, I played football, I played basketball. Um, never was there a sport where you actually convened at the end of a, a game mm -hmm. and and commiserated over bad shots or, 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 or a loss or, or like pointed a finger at a win. Um, that's what I find so unique about curling. And I think that's on this website can really kind of say, hey, you win or lose, you're still sitting down with your opponent at the end. That's a great point. And it's probably a huge part too as to why we like all become such close friends and such a tight knit community is like in what other activity or sport are you sitting down and learning like what the other people do for a living, where they come from. And I know in your guys' last episode you were talking about like how you guys have like used each other's lines of businesses for your own benefit in the real world too. And it's just so cool. It's such a, a cool connection that we're able to build through this um, curling environment. Except for Joel, because Joel deals with like mice eyeballs. <laughs> Correct. And like that really doesn't have any play with anybody in the real world like but his it yeah, but, skill set is out, his uh, it stuff, yeah yes. the yeah the nerd stuff really helps um right. uh also my other part-time job that i retired from was uh uh aircraft electrician in the air guard so that has so, uh, that actually has turned screwdrivers on an f-16 i was a box swapper and smoking <laughs> meat too so. and smoking meat yes Build a journey, man. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about um, how much hand did you have in uh, the creation of the new logo? Um, I was on the calls. So it was Jeff Plush, uh, Amy Harnden, who's a competitive curler and a junior high performance coach now as well. Um, she's super creative and amazing. And um, Jeff Plush. And we actually met with a marketing agency and so the first meetings were just super broad like what is curling what are like the shapes of your sport what are what's important to the sport and they started getting into conversations about like font and what story each font tells and I'm like what is going on right now like what do you mean what story does this font tell but um I mean we got there I I 
Yeah. It was exciting to be a part of. It was a huge learning <clears throat> opportunity for me, and I was excited to be along for the ride. But I definitely give full credit to Amy and Jeff on that. So I mean, there was a lot of education to bring that marketing group up to speed as to what curling is and... Yeah, I mean, they knew, um, but it was kind of like identifying the key components of our sport, like timelessness, tradition, bold mm -hmm. character, stuff like that. Like, how can we let those um, characteristics shine through in a logo that makes it easily identifiable? And then also something that we're proud of, like proud to put on merchandise and turn that into a money-making opportunity. All right, so what... What about the eleven stripes? Oh, we come back to the eleven again, stripes in every episode. <laughs> Tell me, how much influence did you personally have on eleven as being the number of stripes? You feel like you guys could make a drinking game, like every time you say eleven stripes, your listeners have to win. <laughs> I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the outlier in the room. Everybody is like, what does this 11 stripes mean? So. Yeah. Um, well, as you guys know and have talked about, the 11 stripes are for the states and regions and the national governing bodies side by side. And um, actually, it's in a place where it is underneath the curling stone and the four stars. So it's like those governing bodies are actually what is supporting the athletes which is kind Ooh, of cool nice. i know on social media some people said well that's a stretch but um i can I hadn't show you that, that it, way, it, but... it really was yeah. very intentional so um i guess knowing the work and like the the thought process that went into it it's easy for for me to see and get behind it but i get i get the inquiries about the 11 stripes <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, I think you answered that pretty well. We're going to... Well, I have one more, more question. Was it tedious or was it pretty seamless? Because I've been through design processes where it's like some people don't get it, some do get it. And it I, I love a good font as, as much as the next guy, but I don't right. think they really tell a story, but, you know, I guess... Oh, Joel. I'm not in marketing. What font did... <laughs> you end up with i'm looking at the logo i don't know what font it is that is called arpona uh our secondary oh. font is source sans pro um yeah. as you know Ar it's very arpona? yeah arpona. and source sans that? pro a a like a-r-p-o-n-o a-r-p-o-n-a p-o-n-a yeah all right go to word you'll find it <laughs> all right um it wasn't tedious it was more fun than anything because Good. um i for one was not a huge fan of our previous logo i thought it left a lot to be desired so like anything that they showed us i was like oh my god yeah let's do it like, this is awesome but then you start comparing it to like like we had something very similar to like the converse logo at one point and so then you see Ooh. this other Ooh. mark and you get that in your head and you're like this this will never work or like captain america or stuff like that so it took a lot of like trial and error to try to make it try to find something that wasn't like so similar to another identifiable yeah mark. the previous logo was was around for quite a long time and and craig can show the pin for it <laughs> no not today i don't know where it is yeah, well you have to go back to episode one for that craig the pin whore so he he knows all the pins so so yeah, what's that... your favorite font then? Is it Arpona or do you like do you have another <laughs> font that you like better? Helvetica maybe? I don't know. Times I think Roman. Helvetica. What? Times New Roman I think is just uh, a classic. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Craig? I like Bookman old style actually. Mm. I used to write my papers in Bookman old style. Like it looks like the old style beer can. Like Palantino is the best font that's ever and, been invented sorry so i liked bookman because it was like it was wide so i like i typed my papers in it and in my papers what? my papers looked like they were longer than they really were because it was a wide font so work uh, smarter not harder yeah. oh, Check there's, it out a, there's some nice one called Wingdings, uh, Wingdings <laughs> 2 and Wingdings 3. Wingdings. Uh, yeah, lots of, so many to choose from. Yeah. I think you guys did a great job. 
Hi, did you ever turn in a paper with wing things? Uh, no, uh, okay. I turned in a paper with lots of lack of structure and content, but never uh, wing dings. Okay. So anyways, I've got some questions that I'm going to ask you, but if anybody else has something they want to ask Jenna, her USA curling role, I think you should fire away. How much you get paid? <laughs> 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 well, I'm guessing it's from the USCA, so not as much as you should. Yeah, Twenty eight dollars. Well, Jenna, where where are you broadcasting <laughs> from right now? What? What's that? Where Where are you broadcasting from right now? Looks like the guest bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> what Providence? What state? What? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. So did did what, you start? What club do uh, you curl out of? Uh, I curl out of the Wabatosa Curling Club. And are they curling? That's a fun club. It is a super fun club. Um, great club. Are they curling? Yes. Am I? No. Um, my husband is. He actually got into it big time as I was on my way out. So that's kind of a weird <laughs> dynamic that we have going on right now. But um, he's excited about it and the culture and like. Yeah. Loves going to like the Twin Cities and bond spieling and stuff like that, mm. and I'm the one staying home now, so it's a little it's a little weird. But we're did it. did you start post pandemic or? Um, the, the club opening. You mean? Yeah. No, your your job. Like, did did you start? Oh, I started on the same day as like that the pandemic got declared. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that for sure, but I started March yeah. 16th. So that was kind oh. of uh, strange. Yeah, you can you can fill in the blanks with what's happened since, but it's been interesting. <laughs> um, but I figure if we are making as much progress as we are in, like, it, it can't get any worse than this. Knock on mm -hmm. wood. Um, yeah. It makes me super excited for the future. So. And Wauwatosa is curling. Wauwatosa is curling. Yes. And how's it going? Good. I mean, they um, did their homework by putting good plans in place with contact tracing and um, social distancing and no broom stacking, which actually I was surprised to learn. Is that a questionable term? Do you guys not use the word? <laughs> no. No? Did you use it prior to like <laughs> the last year or so? <laughs> yeah. You did? Yeah. That, when would you that use broomstacking? The whole broomstacking verbiage might have been my fault in that document. <laughs> so I apologize. What happened? But to me, I don't know. So, so this is like a word that you've always had in your head, and now you've just like, forced it upon the curling world? <laughs> I'm very embarrassed by this. Um, I don't know. I thought it was just a universally used term. Where did I've you only... hear, where, when did you first hear broomstacking? Janesville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Janesville. Um, really? Yeah, which is only a hop, skip, and a jump away from Madison, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. have expected it to not. I've never used it for drinking after. It's always, oh, we're ahead. Let's go have an alcohol before we continue the game. Okay. I've never used it as an after. I've usually said, let's forget about that and the rest of the night. Go have beers. But yeah, I mean, I've, well, or, or we would use broom stacking on like the fourth or the seventh end, and okay. we'd stack, yeah. stack brooms okay. to take a break during the draw. I've used to uh, say, hey, let's go inside, have a drink, and stack brooms, but I've never used broom stacking, but it seems weird. Whatever. So maybe this boils down to me being like a clueless nine-year-old, not knowing what the adults were talking about, and just thinking that's. No, you you were just mm -hmm. you're just sheltered by being part of real curling. Or <laughs> or Jenna, you're a you're a trendsetter, and this yeah. is what is going to be called broom stacking from here on out. I, I like it because it yep. so many people are saying it now. So I think you yeah. started. It's I like, like it. Crazy. Yeah. It might be your start of trend. Year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The future is here, guys. You guys, you guys, we'll, we'll you guys at, steer into that skid. Right. Steer into we'll it. Look at, we'll look at Wikipedia in 2020, uh, 30 years from now, and it's a 
proclaimed as Jenna saying that broom stacking is cool. I'll is take it. All right. How, um, what's your, what's can, your I, hey, can I take well, uh, Dougie Fresh on a bond spiel sometime? Oh. I hope he doesn't listen to this. To I, so excited. <laughs> yeah, me and Ty and Joel Garrett will get to go five man team. Yep. Oh, yeah. Dougie Fresh will be there. Yep. Yep. He would love nothing more. And he's going to crawl that. home from that. <laughs> Wait, are you okay with it, though? I want to run it by you first. Me? So then when you say no, we can figure out a way around, a workaround. No, please take mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Please. <laughs> so who brought you into curling? Um, my parents, they, um, did it on Friday night, they curled on Friday nights, and, um, it, uh, they would bring my brother and I into the club on Saturday mornings for the junior league, and just kind of, like, dump us off for the day, and that's where we would be, and I hated it so much, like, <laughs> to the point, <laughs> I would hide in lockers, and I just did not want to be there, but, um, Eventually, I made some friends, and here we are. <laughs> so, are you Parker or Craig? Milton. Oh, you went to Milton. Okay. Yeah. Milton. Get, yep. get it through your head there, Gary. I'm sorry. So, yeah, it's such a close-knit community. It's like Milton is like literally four, mi four miles away, if not. Mm -hmm. from all right, all right. So, that was one of the questions, is how would you get started? So, your parents yep. were hungover after curling on Friday nights. <laughs> and they wanted some peace and quiet, so they dumped you and your brother at the club on Saturday morning. That's what I'm figuring out in my um, older years. Yes, I think that's very much what happened. Okay. Do they still, do your parents still play? My mom does. Yeah, it's funny, too, because Janesville recently got a mixed doubles league, and she signed up with another, <laughs> another woman, and she didn't know. That mixed doubles meant one man and one, one, one woman. So she signed up with her best friend, and she goes, get this, Jenna, we were the only two, we were the only female team there. I'm like, um. Uh, Ma so, Madison yeah. does the same thing. Like, it's it's a mixed doubles league, but it's really open, so. That's cool, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, so she still has fun with it. My dad's too uh, rickety to keep going, I think. Oh, I hope Me you too. Don't this show, if you're in there calling the names like that. How long have they been curling, Jenna? Since uh, you've known? I don't know. Maybe 30 years? Socially? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, so that's one of our questions. How did you start? And then I have another one. Um, your favorite club. And you can't say your home club, and I don't know which one you're going to call your home club because you've kind of had, had like both. Them. both. Those count as both as home, home clubs. Okay, so your favorite club anywhere in the whole world that's not a club that you have considered your home club before. In the whole world, um, I would say, shoot. Maybe the I haven't heard of that club. The club in uh, Bern. Oh, that's a good club. It's a good club. The ice is nice. The location is um, amazing. What that's city? Cool. Um, so it's in Bern, Bern Switzerland. Switzerland. I don't actually know the name of the club. Now that I think of it, but Bern Curling Club. Let's yeah. go with that. In I Switzerland. Feel like if, you put, if you put anything in Switzerland, it's bound to be good. So. Yeah. It's a little better. It's more expensive, but it's better. Yeah. They got all those. That was nice, the first uh, curling club. Sorry, go ahead, Ty. They got all those nice uh, little spires all over town, and they got the one where the guy is shoving babies in a sack and eating the babies. Exactly. Yeah, I think when I was I was there a couple of years ago, and then you saw that snap. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, I've seen this before, and it was the weird baby statue outside of the hotel that we stay at. It is. It's a weird statue. Uh, that was the first curling club I w had ever bought, been to that had electronic scoreboards. It was mm -hmm. kind of like revolutionary. And you know what? Too yeah. is I feel like Europe is really 
ahead of the times with their mirrors on the other end. I don't know if there's any U.S. clubs that have those. Is it Brainstone? There's Does some in Brimstone? Canada, for sure. I don't know if there's any in the U.S. Does Brimstones have mirrors? I think they do. Hmm. Explain mirrors. I don't know it's mirrors. It's been a while. Uh, they put a mirror on the back <clears throat> wall that's at like 30 degrees. So that when you're behind the glass on the other end, you can see straight down on the house. Oh, really? Instead wow. of having overhead cam cameras, they have mirrors. I've never seen that. Uh, uh, it's They're probably like 50 times more expensive than cameras nowadays. But, you know, yep. when they started putting them up 40 years ago, they were, you know, cameras were probably 50 times more expensive. So, so in lieu of a camera, they'd put a mirror up. So when you're looking from the long end, you could see. Yep. The ice. Oh. So Rochester, New York has two of the four sheets have the mirror on the back wall. Well, I like the mirrors, especially as a front end player. You can just kind of turn around and. And you don't have to worry about garbage. Uh, coverage from home curling clubs that have cameras from the early 90s you just have to worry about somebody throwing a broom so yeah yeah i suppose yeah okay uh next question um best advice you ever got as a player and or as a person in the curling world or just in general in your life hmm. normally this is a curling specific question but i'm gonna give you free reign to just say your best advice period i wish you would have given me these questions before we no. before this very no. moment no. i should have yeah <laughs> should have we will later when we're not interviewing you so. yeah. yeah you want me to answer and stall for a minute yeah please all right somebody told me once before i went to college get really good grades the first semester because then you can kind of screw, or the whole, maybe it's the whole freshman year, because then you can kind of screw around the rest <laughs> of the time you're in college. But if you get like C's and D's the first year in college, then you're screwed the rest of the way out. Hmm. Cal and, Tillish gave me that advice from Wausau. That applied to the rest of your life? Tillish, Tillish gave you that advice? <laughs> it was the best. I don't know. I mean, okay. I'm not saying that's like my whole life. No, that's a good advice. <laughs> applicable like that. but that was the that was a that was a very good piece of advice that i got well in curling if you do well the first two ends you can just <laughs> kind of coast the rest <laughs> of the game and you're good right right all right, <clears throat> all right do you want do you want to, did you come up with something or you want to take a pass for a minute yeah was joel's uh comment though a dig at your six ender that you talked about last episode Ooh, it might have been but I don't take a whole lot of offense to Joel when it comes to him commenting on my curling skills. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so. He's not intimidated at all. So. I got I got some great advice. Uh, I can't remember where I got it from. All I know is that I was in a shitty time in my life, and I found this thing. Is once you realize how insignificant you are, you can truly start living. And I love that. Mm-hmm. All right, now we're going to have a lot of people thinking about their life. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, Dr. Ty right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let me make a new Twitter page. <laughs> yeah. Just motivational quotes. Yeah. You know what? Take that second white. We don't know. Uh, Go something out, Jenna. I, I guess in terms of curling advice, I think that we've all probably heard this at some point is the cliche uh, bit that says don't, hmm, uh-oh, it says don't play the, play the stones, not the people. Oh, all right. Yeah. And if we want to get it. deep, which I'm not going to do right now, is I feel like you could apply that to other realms of your life as well. Just do your thing. All right. All right. That's fair. Uh, favorite spiel. It can be a party spiel. It can be a junior spiel, a competitive spiel, anything. What's your favorite bond spiel? Madison Halloween spiel. Oh, ah. good answer. Next. Good choice. <laughs> Next. Why? Mm. Party. Party. Fun. Well, well it's got to be f uh, for the bacon. 
Joel, I actually haven't had any of your bacon ever. What? You, you oh, don't shit. eat meat. Oh, my. Because you don't eat meat. No, I've never been offered. <gasps> what? What? Dude, that's a lie. There's that's a... 100% a lie. <laughs> I've done a. You've just been blacked out when you've been offered it. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a bacon bar at the Halloween spiel for uh, five years now. Four. four You're years? making like sixty pounds of bacon every on, time, right? On Saturday night, yeah, we we go through like sixty pounds in an hour. On sa Saturday night. I was probably on the ice. Uh, she's maybe she was curly. Hmm. Or maybe she was passed out. Maybe she was passed out. In the locker room. <clears throat> so it's not mm -hmm. about the bacon. It's about the camaraderie. It's about yada yada. Keep going. Yeah. All right. Next. Fun. Yeah. She she answered that with authority. Mm hmm Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I kind of am throwing in a different one. If you could change one rule in curling, what would it be? If I could change one rule in curling. <sighs> I'm saying no smack talk. There should be an etiquette I'm change. Out of the, can I kick Garrett out? Yeah, out of the get out of here. <laughs> Half of what I fucking do. <laughs> um, I think rolling subs would be a great one. Hmm. I think white socks and black pants. You just shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's just wrong. I think that how would the people over fifty curl? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's let Jenny answer the question. I think that um, one shot per game, you get to demand that the other team throws it again. Oh, hmm. oh, that's like the Lucas. Yeah, they do this at the uh, Lupus Spiel. You can buy. Okay. You, you can. Oh, you can buy no, it. Well, you. No, that's oh, that works. Yeah, that's that works. Yeah, no, you can buy a package a of things like, and. But you gotta you're not, you're you gotta not necessarily pay for like uh, saying, "Oh, you don't get that," but like you gotta. They gotta prove it. They gotta prove that they can do it a second time. I kind of like that. Especially like the wicky wacky play yes. D shots. Yeah. yeah. So you there's a shot call, yeah. and they throw it, and there's a wiki whack, and they actually make a different shot than they actually call. You yeah. got to actually make them shoot that exact same shot again. Not so there, the shots they yeah. called, but so the there, shots that they made. So there's another there's there's another side to that that um, that we talk about at the lupus spiel almost every year is that. Uh, we're very careful when we play that card because uh, the other person uh, might be a newer curler and maybe they just made the best shot of their life. By accident. No, oh, if the, no, if they sh no, if, if they called and made it, like if they may have made the best shot they've ever made in, in their life. Right. And it's a hit and roll, called, made, hit, hit and roll. But I think where Jenna's coming from, if Correct me if I'm wrong, Jenna. If it's a, a if shot, it's a B shot. BS shot, it's a shot called and they missed it, and they came up with a better ending. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I think either. You threw a, mm. a good point into this conversation, but I think either if it's a highly unlikely shot and they're kind of throwing a hail mary, like do it again if they make it. Um, I don't know what would happen if they got a plan B and they made it and they threw it again, what they would have to throw. I got to think about that a little bit before we put it into effect. But um, yeah, that would be my rule. I like that rule. I think I like that's it. a good one. I like it. All right. Uh, final question that I have. If you could play in a bond spiel with any people you wanted in the whole world, alive or dead, and it, do, it can be any level bond spiel you want. It can be a that spiel, it can just be a, it can be the Halloween spiel. Who, who are your teammates going to be? Curlers, I would assume. Or just no. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, anybody. Who are you you want to play with Barack play Obama? With. Go ahead. Play with Barack Obama. Katie Couric is going to be on my team for sure. <laughs> sure. I love that nice. fact that you nice. I love it. And she probably kicked your ass. niece and it worked. That it was worked. awesome. 
We're yes. actually related, so it would be rude if I didn't invite her. Um, Katie Couric. Hmm. You know what I have to go with, actually, is just our Cape Cod Summer Spiel ladies team of Anne, Swiss Helm, Becca, Hamilton, and Jennifer Stannard. I think um, keeping it simple is fun. Uh, That's a fun squad. You guys are going to be underwhelmed yeah. by this answer, but um, no, that's a great. Well, answer. if you throw in Katie Kirk as the fifth, yeah, well, that's a good, that's a good team. Right. Katie mm -hmm. Kirk would make martinis at the Airbnb once we get back from a win, and it would be a, it'd be a great weekend. Um, Who's skipping? Who's skipping? Oh, I don't care, Jennifer. Katie Kirk is skipping. She could. <laughs> Katie Kirk can do whatever Katie Kirk wants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. uh... I, I lied. I have another question. How'd you get the name Bubba? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> so the U18 was, I don't know if it's still a thing, was this uh, a tournament in Canada that we would sign up to and go. And Becca Hamilton was my teammate at the time. And she filled out my paperwork that was like, put down your nickname, your hobbies, blah, blah, blah. And she put my nickname down as Bubba. So <laughs> we show up in Winnipeg or wherever we were. And everything, everything from that week said Bubba, Bubba Haig on it. <laughs> <laughs> my name tag, like the program, everything. But nice. This stuck, yeah. So how many people call you Bubba to this day? Hmm. It's an embarrassing amount. Um, yeah. Well, everybody it's probably going to go up it. based on the viewership of this podcast. It's gonna go up by at least yeah. four. All seven people are gonna start calling you Bubba now. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you very much for being on. Uh, tell Dougie Fresh that uh, we are curling in a bond spiel with him, and after COVID goes away. Yep. And uh, we'll bring him back. Might not be in one piece, but we'll bring him back. And. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for coming, and good luck with the the social me social and digital media content planning. And Jenna, thank yeah. you for all your hard work on that. That is awesome. I um, your 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 uh, passion for curling really showed. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, thanks. You got Dad. the socials. You got the socials for uh, people to follow. Come on. At USA Curl on Twitter and Facebook, at USA underscore Curl on Instagram. And if you want to comment, say something nice, preferably. <laughs> but or sarcastic, take, whatever. Will you, we'll see. Yeah. Will you listen to negative stuff too, as well? What? Um, yeah, you know, there's some negative stuff in there as well. Sure. You know, toss in a, a positive vibe here and there. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. You want to shout out your bosses or uh, throw them under the bus a little bit while you're here, or do you my want bosses. to just edit that part out? Yeah. <laughs> I would love to shout out my boss, um, Jeff Plush, the CEO of USA Curling, is awesome, and a lot of the reason that I have the passion that I have, and I think is the driving force behind the future of USA Curling and where we're going to go and reach new heights that otherwise wouldn't seem possible. So. Um, yeah, Here definitely thankful for him. Well, thanks to Jen Jennifer for coming on. Um, we got some updates of events across the U.S. Uh, USA Juniors and World Juniors are both canceled, unfortunately. And wheelchair. And wheelchair? Wheelchair Worlds are also canceled. Wheelchair Worlds, okay. Well, that's too bad. Uh, the Big Spiel was can canceled unfortunately uh there's yeah, a mix going so they were going so strong they yeah. were like trying real hard but what uh have we heard why like was it a covid thing oh it had to be yeah they had yeah. well over their first request yeah, yeah. i'm got, guessing it was a travel thing for yeah. cases going up ev ev everywhere across the u.s yeah. uh the big spiel is canceled yeah. there's a mixed double spiel in in Blaine was canceled. Um, the men's and women's nat nationals scheduled for 
Cedar Rapids has been uh, temporarily moved somewhere else. We don't don't know where yet. Uh, but they got the arena was hurt by that. Uh, what was that thing called? The the hurricane that went across the Midwest. Derecho, derecho, uh, derecho, derecho. 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 Yeah. Derecho. So the derecho went across and barely damaged part of the arena. And now they can't, because of COVID, they can't get crews in there fast enough to fix it. So well, men's and women. It's also, they, they're worried about COVID being spread too. So. Right. Uh, right. So the crews, they can't get the crews in there fast enough to fi fix it. So, uh, but they're still looking for another, another way to do it. So, um, at yeah, least have right, some I, championship. I, I, I want to stop you yeah. for a second. Sure. I'm trying to figure out derecho. Is that how we pronounce this? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, like, I still don't understand what happened. It's like this storm with like a bunch of like little mini tornadoes or just super high winds or, or what? yeah, super no. high winds that yeah. went across the Midwest. They're like basically um, straight line winds that that yeah. they come through. They're not they're not they're not necessarily. Um, they're not tornadoes. Designated as a hurricane or a, or a tornado, but they're like straight line winds, and they can actually now, they can actually track them, and say this is something that happened. So. All right. If, so like it missed us. We're in Wisconsin, some Madison, southern Wisconsin, south central Wisconsin. It went it just went, south, went just it, south of us. It went just south south of us by a couple of miles, um, or more than a couple of miles, but uh, enough that uh, I was getting married in in the backyard uh, of my house, and it was close enough that I was uh, getting a little worried <laughs> that I was going to come across and and. Uh, come across our back backyard well, southeast wisconsin had i think we had um 60 mile an hour winds that were coming through so okay so we got off lucky in wisconsin cedar yep. rapids we did. did not nope okay. you guys on the bluffs probably helped helped us a little bit slow down yeah. Yeah. but yeah it's uh is a widespread long-lived straight line winds storm that is associated with a fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms known as a mesoscale convective system and potentially rivaling hurricane and tornadic forces. Now we have our meteorologist. Thank you. Yeah. Internet. <laughs> it's going right. <laughs> you look like a meteorologist, so it's awesome. As you can see, yeah. Yeah, the ratio so. came down this line. And smash yeah. this building. So yeah, uh, yeah. So we got 47 degree yeah. weather coming down through Eau Claire, which will be transferring to a warmer condition as we go towards Boston and Madison for the weekend. <laughs> and if we take a look mm -hmm. on Saturday, we're going to have some high Manitoban winds come down through the area, going to yes. drop it by about 20 degrees. <laughs> yes, love it. All right, love Ty. It. Uh, Ty, so uh, once once this COVID stuff starts starts to lift, we'll uh, uh, you'll be back in person here, and we can set up a green green screen, and we can uh, do do an actual actual one for you. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say music videos as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah but the implication, yeah, but the implication was their their basic their the roof got blown off, and so Iowa is no longer hosting men's and women's nationals. They're Correct. going to look for a new site. Yep. Um, which I have heard is in the works, and they're trying to negotiate it out, but they don't have any of that settled yet. So that is. Yeah. Hopefully it happens. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a then... post about this earlier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rumors and in innuendo, for sure. Due to facility damage from the derecho that's up through Iowa, along with ongoing challenges of the pandemic, the 2021 men's Women's National Championship will be re relocated from Cedar Rapids, is all it fucking says. Yep. Yeah, and there's there's a couple of clubs that are um, vying for it that that might be able to not a not a arena club 
something that they want, but there might be a possibility of a, a of a bear club holding that venue. Might have to do it outside. With COVID regulations, might I just have to play on a lake somewhere. Yeah, love it. That'd be fine. I like it. Uh, also, last right. weekend was the USCA Members Assembly meet meeting. Uh, videos are on the USCA's YouTube page if you want to watch them. Craig, you got an update about that? Yes. <laughs> I was there. It was super exciting. <laughs> um, actually, I was not a part of the... I uh, was part of the Members Assembly meeting uh, where we discussed some things. Uh, including the Iowa National Championship no longer happening. Um, and then the, but all of the members assembly seminars did happen on Sunday and you can find those online if you go to the website that Jenna just talked about. Uh, the USA Curling there will be links to, I think they had five or six different seminars throughout the day that, you know, you can now, now watch at your leisure, um, which is nice. They, what did we talk about in the USCA meetings? We passed a uh, vote to switch to a kind of an in, individual membership model at the USCA. Uh, it really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot for the average curler. Um, it changes up. It makes logistics easier for the USCA. It lets them contact individual curlers easier to give them information about, hey, here's your, here's your association providing you services of whatever kind or trying to get you involved or trying to get uh, you know instead of that information passing through curling clubs and then maybe getting disseminated out to membership this is a way that the national association can talk to a curler directly um i think there's still probably some logistical stuff that needs to be worked out but in general uh it seems like this is a positive move for the USCA. Uh, that happened. And that's getting rolled out now or in the future? In. Or soon? Soon. Okay. Soon. There's doing some testing uh, as far as like finalized product. But, you know, another thing that they just, that they, we as a board members voted on was that if your club is not opening this year due to COVID. Um, you, nobody has to pay dues. That's there, was a, there was a specific amendment or yeah, amendment to the bylaws that said through January of 2022, um, they would hold no fault to clubs um, through, you know, January of 2022 if they were not opening. Yeah. So like Madison Curling Club, for example, we aren't opening this year, or so it seems. Um, we, we owe nothing to the club or to the USCA to remain a member of good standing at, at, in, the, in the association. And the Wisconsin Association is not like we don't, the Wisconsin Association doesn't lose credits for our membership uh, because we aren't paying dues because that seems fair this year. So, fair. yeah. So that was a good, good maneuver, I think. Um, what else? I just think it's, I, I, I think the biggest uh, impact was USCA is really trying to reach out to the individual member. Um, Kind of the the past history was uh, the general curler didn't know what USCA was doing. Um, 
And so now this creates a platform in which there's a direct contact between USCA and the individual member, which is the Sport 80, which you'll hear about and read about. Um, so I think it's a great uh, platform for USCA to reach out to, hi, that's my dog, sorry. Um, I think it's a great platform for the USCA to reach out directly to an individual member rather than um, having this like um, amalgamous con uh, conversation between like the president of a club to the club, club members. This will give an opportunity to the USCA to, to directly make communication to an individual member. Right on. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it is a little bit of a weird situation because this member's assembly in the past was always in person. Um, and so some of the discussion usually is a little easier to have, I think, or debate. Um, it's a little easier to have in person than it is on a virtual call. Um, plus, you, you know, if you normally go to one of these meetings, then you get to have cocktails when it's all over or cocktails beforehand. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like a bond spiel without curling. It's kind of like a bond spiel without curling. Um, so there's more arguing. <laughs> um, so anyways, I don't know. I think it was, I think it went all right. Uh, you, was there another thing or two? It just it, in, in my, my opinion in general, it's just the USCA trying to find a way to connect directly to a curler rather than the club itself. Um, and so kind of uh, like what you just said. Correct. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's the intent. That was the, a lot of the intent of this uh, membership. And they're still working out. Right. Uh, are they still working out some of the uh, logistics and how it's going to get imp implemented and rolled out and, and some of that so there's more info co coming yeah yeah it's you know i'm sure like my guess is it's not going to be perfectly smooth immediately when it starts but uh they are the intent is to make this as user friendly as possible for the curling clubs and the individuals and everybody else and they're not there's no penalties for anybody mm -hmm. you know covid related not playing anyways this year or for the next 14 months um <coughs> excuse me uh so i i think they've got some time to iron out the kinks um mm -hmm. which are sure to probably come with some technical issues but i think that it's a good it's a good plan in general yeah, I'm sure a, a rollout this big, uh, it's a pretty big change for any organization to take. Uh, 20, 30,000 people and change how they sign, sign up. And that's, that's what we're registering right now. There may be more than that. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? So, all right. Uh, uh, I think that's about it with the updates, other than some bond spiels. Now, mm -hmm. did you say the U.S. So the U.S. Open bond spiel in Blaine is also canceled, not just the mixed doubles. Yep, the whole thing. Yep, all of it. Um, and so it, there, as far as I know, there is not a single bond spiel for competitive players in the United States to play in between now and nationals, wherever that may be. Yeah. Which they were, is a little interesting. They were trying because... to they were trying to do something in December with uh, another scrimmage type thing, but that got scrubbed. Yeah. And yeah, it's interesting because uh, there's I don't know, we're gonna it's gonna it's going to get weird here in another couple weeks when they have to start having teams like finalized to go to the nationals wherever or whenever that is going to be. And they 
And nobody's, uh, nobody's played and nobody's got points and nobody's played. <laughs> nobody explain no that. Drag yeah. Explain no that down will. to the. Explain that down to like the dummy curler. I mean, not dummy curler. The 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 person that isn't competitive. Explain. Explain so, Garrett. Sorry, what's that tie? Explain, explain it to Garrett. Me. Explain to me. Explain to me. Yeah. Explain so, to Garrett. Uh, like in a normal year, um, for men's and women's nationals, they like, and I I might have a specific or two wrong here, but it's basically. Like the top four, five teams uh, from tour will get an automatic berth into the national championships, um, and that's essentially a way to reward the teams that are going out and working hard throughout the fall. They give them they give them a spot straight into the national championship, and then there's something called the challenge round. Or well, the HP teams are already in. HP teams and then a couple tour teams. HP teams are not not anymore. Necessarily straight in. If not they anymore? get the points, they will, right? They've got to get the points, but okay. they normally get the points because they are, you know, going to events. Incur- well, first of all, they're generally the best team. Second mm-hmm. of all, they have coaches that are and finances that are telling them they have to go and play a bunch of. Skills. And they're going and paying a a bunch of playing a, a bunch of bonds for you. Yeah, gets them the point. But I don't think that HP teams. They're not automatically are, in anymore. Uh uh-uh. uh Oh, okay. No. Cool. Say that again, Joe. I'm sure they aren't. Um, from what I remember, I may have this. I may have this wrong in my head, but I thought the. Uh, the HP teams were in automatically, and then there was a couple of point teams that were brought brought in. That's how it used to be. That's how it used to be. I think, think now they have... Uh, now it's just straight points? I think it's just straight points, but there's it's maybe a little deeper okay. in points. Like, now sure. maybe five teams get in, whereas in the past it was only... Like, maybe they automatically sent one or two HP teams into the Nationals, and then, like, two teams qualified on points. Now I think it's, like, yep. five teams get in on points um, in a normal year. And then uh, there's a challenge round or a qualifying round. I don't know what they call it nowadays. Um, where you basically sign up and play this triple knockout uh, and – three teams or four teams or however many are left um, get slotted into nationals. But this year with COVID, there's no spiels. So they already decided who was in the nationals. They basically took, they basically took the top points teams from last year. Uh, Top finisher, like Schuster got in because he won. And then I think they took, like, the next four teams based on points. Um, And then said nobody has to travel this year because of COVID. You know, and that was a couple months ago. Um, And then they still thought they'd be qualifying, like, three or four teams out of this qualifying round or challenge round. Um, But now they might not be able to have a challenge round. So... I don't know. They're going to have to figure out if they're going to expand Nationals field and then let the next two or three ranked teams. I, I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, or if they're just going to make Nationals field smaller. And, uh, you know, who knows? There might not be a Worlds. They're yeah. talking Currently, they're talking about having a bubble for Worlds. Uh, um, I just don't see it happening. That's so going to be the a last tough choice. I heard, See Canada curling, curling Canada, however they call it nowadays. Um, there was an article or from them and CBC that said they might, what they might do is have a host city and put the Scotties, the Briar. Uh, so the Scotties is the Canadian Women's Championship, Briar's Canadian Men's Championship. Then like the next. So they just rent out this arena in some city for 
whatever, two months, month and a half. So Canadian women play. Next week, Canadian men play. The next week, uh, world, mi- world mixed doubles. Um, the next week, women's worlds. The next week, men's worlds. And then, you know, they're done. And so they basically, you know, they have this arena for, you know, like I said, like two months. Two and months. Everybody yeah, wow. who's in is yeah. in. Um, and they, you know, you got to get checked in kind of like the NBA did uh, in, where'd they do that, Orlando? Um, yeah. So, I don't know, you know, maybe they'll do something like that, but, and that's what they're talking about, possibly hmm. doing for U.S. Nationals, is having a bubble where they do, like, men's and women's <clears throat> one week, take a couple of days off, and then do, like, mixed doubles next week um since a lot of the athletes will already be in the bubble from the men's and women's couple of but it gets it gets tricky logistically and expense wise uh so we'll see what happens yeah because then people would have to quarantine once they get in and get tested and isolated and uh that doesn't sound like a fun thing to organize so, no, uh, no. I would think that, like, the way it would have to go down is maybe you'd have to get a test, like, I don't know, I'm just spe- shooting from the hip here. Like, say you get a test five days before you go. go. And you, you show up, you show them your negative test when you get there. They test you again. And then you sit there for five days, isolated, and confirm mm-hmm. that you're actually negative. And then uh, you get to curl. Um, I would hope they would have ongoing but, but testing too at some point during the event too. But yeah, yeah, probably. But you can't go anywhere. Like yeah, if you, all your mo- all your meals, everything has to be like you can't normally. You know, when you go to a nationals or something like that, everybody's staying at their own places. Mm-hmm. You know, picking their own hotels, going to their own restaurants. <laughs> That wouldn't be the option here. Like you, a bunch of curlers, a bunch of curlers bored and trapped in a hotel room. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like yeah, but want... you can't even go to the liquor store. Yeah. Well, that's why you gotta bring bring in a five day day supply on day one, which yeah. you yeah, might need. Like... Curlers might need another room for that. Crago, have you have you heard anything about like um, outside of the U.S. like? Uh, what is uh, Europe doing? What's um... hard lockdown right now? Yeah, but are they mm-hmm. are they curling? Are they? I, I've not heard anything on that side. I don't think there there's was been the... an event since Scotland. The last one doesn't look first. Scotland, uh, they've had a couple of events just at their own like national training center. Right. Um, and it's just you know like. It's kind of like we could do that in theory in the U.S., except Scotland is the size of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Not you know, not even Scotland's the size of like Massachusetts or what you know. Right. Um, I I guess I guess my question is 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 there an attempt for Europe, uh, Asian nations, to put together a team that's going to go to world? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, like, they were curling bond spiels in Switzerland. Um, I don't, I think, think that those are off right now, but I don't, I mean, I haven't heard, I guess, but I haven't, I haven't heard of anybody playing the last couple weekends. There was a spiel no. in Scotland last weekend, but that is basically, you know, their program teams only. It's not everybody in Scotland can sign up for this. Um and you know some of those countries though they just like they have a little bit less of a democratic system than we do maybe with, when it comes to their championships like some of those countries they're selecting they're selecting yeah. who goes to worlds or they've got one team or the coaches pick a team or yeah um like switzerland 
you know, Switzerland, they used to have it where it was a lot more open, but nowadays I feel like there's only a there's only a handful of teams that actually get a chance to play off to go to Worlds. I think last year was eight. I think it was eight. You think that, that they on. still have it that big? Um, it used to last be. Last year it was. Okay. Last year it was eight. Maybe it's just the Olympic trials that they have that they whittle down and they only pick like three or four teams to it. Yeah. Um, that makes more sense. Well, yeah, like a double round because that'll weed out the best of them even. But so I guess that. So what we may see is a bunch of hand-picked teams yeah. that are thrown into a bubble at world. Is that what you're kind of saying? Yeah. I mean, even if they're not hand-picked, even if they win, uh, but they might be, you know, they might be winning small hand-picked events instead of wide open national championship events because they can't have these big qualifiers or they can't have 10 teams. Right. National championships um, to get to a qualifier. Yeah, so I was just watching World's Strongest Man over this weekend. Uh, cause, um, of course you were. I, 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 well, I just missed the qualifier. Um, but, <laughs> um, but they, like, so they were doing, you know, they had people come in from Europe, North America. Um, some Eastern block and they had to, I don't know what exactly they got to be able to travel to our country, but I know that they weren't doing full quarantines. Um, they did it in Florida, which I'm sure helps that. Uh, but they were getting people from Europe. They had to test positive before they left their country. And they Negative. Test, you mean. Yeah. Negative. Or, yeah. 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 They had to positively in their attitude test. Uh, <laughs> And they were testing daily. They, like the internationals got there a week at it. They were quarantining in the hotel in Florida for two days and testing each day. And only eating the hotel ho or eating food that the hotel itself made. And like they, it was a very strict bubble. But I, I know that the NBA was doing that too when they yep. were first in yeah. there. They were only allowing the players in their room to order room service only. So I think getting an international crew and especially only people that are designated as um, necessary, so, I mean, the players, an alternate, a coach, that's it. That's it. Um, no second coaches, no third coaches, no trainers, no and are they allowed? And usually they're not allowing doubling up on rooms. Most of these things are single person rooms. Hmm. So, I mean, depending on the scenario, I mean, I can still see them doubling up, but still, um, a whole men's and women's rotating bubble is going to be a fun logistical place if they have to do single rooms, if they have to, even if they do double rooms. I mean, that's taking up a whole hotel for one event yeah. and that's only yeah i mean they, they would have to take up the whole hotel because yeah. otherwise it's not a bubble anymore right like they got to find a hotel that's willing say, film to, crew to not allow other guests in right yep and that includes film crews caterers um uh commentators i mean everything I, it's i mean it's possible um I just don't see where the money's coming from. No. Especially current. It's going to be tricky, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, talk about that next time, or ne in the future. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. sure this, yeah, is, we're gonna have this a lot. isn't going away. No. no. we got a lot more answers coming And up. it's it's probably going to change eight more times from now until the next episode. So. Yeah. Answers yeah. won't be answers. They'll be guided statements. That's about it. Yeah. Yep. All right, Craig, so... we have some uh, fun news. Fun news? Yeah. What? Because we're going to start a big old debate on when people should do things. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> before before we start that. <clears throat> yeah. Garrett? Hers, cow chips. 
cheddar <laughs> horseradish. Oh my Jesus. Or better flavor. <laughs> I went to my local grocery store. I just moved. Um, I was in line, picking up some groceries. This thing was on like on a shelf on the side, like, hey, buy me. I bought it. These things are the Mac Daddy of all chips. Look at this thing. Uh, you probably can't see it because it's awesome. But it's potato it looks chip. like a potato chip. It looks like it a potato chip. Potato chips. Yeah. You get the cheddar. You get the horseradish. This is the best chip you will ever taste in your life. And I hope hers, at some point in time, will be our sponsor. Because I ate these things. I opened up the chip bag on the way home. And I finished it. And I'm like six miles away from my house. So hers, cow chips, cheddar horseradish, the best chip you'll ever taste. Done. But, they were, they, yeah, they started but, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. No. Yeah. They, uh, oh, the Amish make good chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's the other yeah. thing. So I I did a advocacy look at their website. Um, they're very cool. They're very sustainable. They um they try to like source from local growers. Um, all of their potassium and all the of their effluents. Um, they find a way to like dispose of it ethically. Um, they reach out, so they're a very sustainable company as well. So, um, yeah, hmm. hers. All right, they'll hers. Say, and I'm gonna reach out to them, and so hopefully they'll be our sponsor. So. <laughs> and not to forget <laughs> our our uh, actual sponsor actual for the sponsor. for the, the uh, beer one the beer oh, sponsor. Do that one too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we're going to shout out to uh, Reese again for uh, getting us some great, delicious, great Dane beer. Um, it's a big beer, Reese. It's a, it's a big beer. It's big. so good. I got the, I'm drinking the Pex Pil Pilsner, which was, was really good. Uh, and I was cranked, supposed to cranked get, up the Scotch Ale. I was supposed to get the Scotch Ale, but I got the kitchen sink. And it's actually tasty. Kitchen sink. Yep. I got the Scotch Ale because... Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Great Dane. It's a brew pub that we have down here in Madison, and there's one in Wausau, I believe. There is one, one in Wausau. Wausau. There's yep. three in Madison. Yep. Three in Madison. Uh, uh, four. 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 Yeah, there's four. Four? Yep. Yeah. There's downtown Fitchburg, Middleton, and East Side, East side off Crowded East side. Cottage Grove. East Side. Yep. Um, I've been to three of them. And they make really good beer. Yeah, I've been all four now. Yeah, and they're just, they're nice. Well, because the original one's a pool hall downtown, just off the square. Yep. Um, I lots of pool, to lots of darts. One. Yeah, yep. uh, they do the hourly pool table, um, late night. Um, <clears throat> the nachos are fantastic. Um, I know that they do trivia nights and stuff. So They so make I, a um, huge plate of nachos, like. Yeah, that's like big boys. that. That's a meal for two. And one of the only places that you can get poutine in the Madison area. Yeah, it's it's yeah. like a, a general like fun place to hang out. Like you go, you have beers, you 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 throw darts, or even if you're not throwing darts or, or playing pool, mm. you just go and hang out and drink there. You can get yeah. poutine. That's where we had the yeah, yeah poutine. Their poutines are good too. That gravy is mm -hmm. pretty nice. Hmm. I'm going to have to have that. Well, it, when COVID ends, I'll go and get some poutine. Why don't you just go get a pickup order, man? Yeah, they do take, take out. I feel like poutine is something that you got to eat on the spot. Like, <laughs> it is handed to you. You need to start eating it. You have Lynn cold, Drive. You can't have, like, have Lynn cold drive. ish poutine. <laughs> well, just go to the east side one. There's a park right there. You just sit in your car, mm -hmm. look at the grass, and have a good meal. How about in your car. just. I'm not going to eat poutine in my car in December in Wisconsin. This poutine, like, I'll eat it in my car, gladly. Well, I mean, I would if I had to, but I'd rather just wait and enjoy it like it's meant to be enjoyed when I can sit in a restaurant again. All right. 
Uh, just want to take a minute to thank uh, Jenna uh, for coming in and doing an interview with us. Uh, thanks for all the things that she's doing for the USDA and for all of us. Uh, Great Dane uh, group up because nobody supports us quite like Great Dane, especially because we love beer. Uh, if you want to follow us, look at us on Twitter at Curling Nation, Instagram at The Curling Nation, Facebook Curling Nation, <laughs> website curlingnetwork.com slash curling nation. You can check us out on our podcast on Spotify. And you can find us on YouTube, Podbean, Google Podcasts. If you want to help us out a little bit more, go over to Patreon Nation and give us some feedback. See what, uh, tell us what you want to hear and we'll see you next time. Thank you.